everyone, welcome back to the kitchen. Today we've got another old fashioned classic that's perfect for fall or really any time. Today we're gonna make old fashioned porcupine meatballs. I can't wait to show you how these all come together. We are gonna make good old fashioned porcupine meatballs for dinner. This is just, it just fits right in with our old fashioned for the rest of the year theme and everyone loves a porcupine meatball. So to get started is very simple ingredients. So what I have here is two pounds of ground meat. This is a mix of beef and pork. You can use whatever is your preference. If you want to use chicken or turkey or all beef or all pork or combination therein, you do what you like best. So approximately two pounds. I think these come in like two and a quarter pound packages. But we're gonna mix that with about a cup and a half of rice. Now, you can use long grain rice, but you're gonna need a little more liquid, or you can do what I do. This is a parboiled rice, and it needs approximately 25% less liquid to cook. It cooks faster, I like it better, when I put it in something like this or in my stuffed cabbage rolls. You don't wanna use instant rice here. Instant rice is just gonna to turn to mush and it's just not gonna work. We're gonna season the meat up with a teaspoon each, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper, and Italian seasoning. We're gonna make a gravy out of one large family size can or three small cans of condensed tomato soup, a 28 ounce can of petite diced tomatoes, and we're gonna use some tomato juice in the meat mixture. I don't know how much that's gonna be. We'll know later when we finish, and I'll let you know. But you can always refer to the written recipe, which there will be a link down below. And if you're not familiar with the porcupine meatball, it's really just a seasoned meatball that has rice in it, and you cook it in a very liquidy gravy sort of thing and you bake it and then as the meatballs cook from the raw steak because we're not going to brown them or bake them off the rice absorbs the gravy and all of the flavor and it's just delicious and we love it into our meat mixture we're going to put all of our seasonings and all of our rice and we're just going to get in here there's really no reason here to use anything but your hands just get it all mixed up really well. And the other thing I'm gonna say is, we're gonna start putting in some of this juice. The tomato juice is gonna help loosen the mixture a little bit. It's gonna help tenderize the meatball so you don't end up with little golf balls. You don't want that. If you do this just the right way, the meatballs are gonna be beautiful, tender, and the rice is gonna be tender, and everything is gonna work together really, really well. So I put about a half a cup of that juice in there. I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more. What you wanna make sure is that the meat is blended really, really well, the rice is well distributed, and everybody is in the pool having a happy time. I'm gonna add just a little bit more. I'm just gonna add the rest of it, so. In all, there was about three quarters of a cup of tomato juice in that jar. I didn't fill it all the way up, so. You probably don't wanna add any more than that. The consistency, you can see now, the meat is not as compacted. It's nice and loose. It's very, it's got a good consistency. And if you've made meatballs before, you'll know that there is a really happy medium, but there's a fine line between just right and too loose. So because we're not using any breadcrumb here, you wanna be super careful how much of that juice you actually end up adding back. So I'm gonna add this 28 ounce can of petite diced tomatoes, the tomato soup, and it's as simple as just mixing this all up together. Now remember, you want this to be good and juicy because we need that liquid to cook the rice that's in the meatballs. We're also gonna to be topping this with a piece of parchment paper, and then we're gonna be covering it with some foil because you want to create a steam environment so that the meatballs and the, the rice cook just right. Now all you have to do is form your meatballs and I'm using a scoop so I have a somewhat uniform size and I'm just gonna pop them right in the casserole dish with the tomato soup mixture. And when I'm done doing this, I'll be right back and I'll show you what this looks like. Okay, I have finished forming my meatballs and they're all ready to go. Fit them in the pan. They don't have to be in any specific pattern or anything. Just toss them in that gravy. And then what I'm gonna do now, because I'm using a piece of aluminum foil and tomato uh, products are acidic and they will eat through aluminum foil. I don't really like to use aluminum foil a whole lot on top of things, especially tomato-based items. 
but in this case we have to. Um, so a piece of parchment on top and you're good to go. And I'm gonna just seal this up. And I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. I'm gonna pop this in there for about an hour, at which point I will check it. And at the end, I will let you know exactly how long this took. And again, you can always refer to the printed recipe. So I'll be back as soon as these are done. Well, there you have it. Our porcupine meatballs were in the oven for about an hour and a half and they're perfectly done. They're moist, they're tender, and a lot of the liquid did exactly what it was supposed to do and it cooked up into that rice and it made the meatballs super flavorful. We are serving these with mashed potatoes because that's how we like them. You should serve them how you like. You ready to taste? I have to. Yeah, oh my gosh, look at it. They're just delicious. Look at it. A little mashed potato, a little meatball. What do you think? Mm. They're really very simple and I love that. The simplicity is what gives these their specialness, really. This just takes me back to being a kid. Mm. It's so good. It has just the slightest bit of sweetness from that tomato soup, but adding in that can of diced tomatoes really amps up the flavor, mellows out the sweetness from the condensed tomato soup, and makes these just perfect. That is how you make old-fashioned porcupine meatballs a throwback to many of our pasts. I hope you give this a try sometime soon, and I hope you love it. And until next time, I'll see ya.